In this tutorial, we'll be looking at some of the algebraic essentials for GeoGebra, as well as using this input bar. Um, first thing that we'd like to look at is you'll notice that we already have a Cartesian coordinate system with a few points here. Um, if I click on the little triangle next to the word graphic, you'll notice that we can turn on and off that Cartesian coordinate system as well as overlaying a grid. So let's leave the grid on there. And in fact, um, I have some, I have four points listed here, but I can only see two. So I can do a couple of things. I can go up to this um, magnifying glass and shrink things a bit. All right, so now it looks like I can see all of them. I'm going to go ahead and move the axes a bit, move the entire figure here. And in fact, you know, I'm probably more interested in, because this is, you know, moving up so rapidly, I'm going to change the scales on my two axis system. So if I only want to change one axis system, I'm going to go to the move tool hold down your shift key and grab whichever axis you want to, to change, for example, the Y axis or the X axis. And I can pull, perfect, right? Like that, that's exactly what I wanna see. So notice that, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio anymore for the axes, but we've got a much better view of what's going on with the individual points. So let's suppose that I want to add a point and I don't want to use the point tool. Well, what you can do is you can just give the point a name. We usually use capital letters. You should use capital letters. We'll say point E is going to equal. Now it looks like um, we're going to put an ordered pair. We'll put five comma. Now most people would think that, you know, the next number that we should add would be 25, but I'm going to fool you. I'm going to put the number 12. You'll notice that it automatically goes right onto the location that we need as soon as we hit enter. And you'll notice that the graphics, uh, underneath the graphics title here, we've got uh, characteristics for these different objects. So I could change its color, I could change its size, I could change its type. Um, so we've got lots of uh, interesting things that we could do. We can also um, say whether or not we want the, the name, whether or not we want name and value, whether we want um, it completely hidden so that it's just a point by itself. Um, let's just stick with the name for right now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an interesting feature for the input. So input, you can either input things like points, um, you can input functions, uh, and it will automatically graph the function. But, it, but GeoGebra also has some built-in interesting um, functions and calculations that you can do. One of them is an interesting one called polyfit, or fit poly, sorry, fit poly. And what you do is you give it a list of points. So for us, our listing of points, and if you're doing a, a list, it's a set, so we should use the curly braces. I'll say A, whoops. I'll say A, B, oh, I'll get this right. Curly braces, A comma, B comma, C comma, D comma, E. And then we need to give it the degree of the polynomial that we would like to try to fit for those um, five points. So we'll say, Right now, let's say a fourth degree polynomial. We should be able to get a fourth degree polynomial to fit those. So um, I'll say enter and look at that. Yes, indeed, it fits beautifully, perfectly. And in fact, if I wanted to see if I input six, what would be the next term 
in my generated sequence, I could just say, let's look at point F, and I'm going to say that's 6, comma. Notice that we've got this function notation now, so I can say the function evaluated at 6. And so this point F turns out to be, if you input 6, you get negative 29. So now we have this sequence that's being generated, 1, 4, 9, 16, 12, negative 29. Um, and so I think that's rather interesting.